We are now continuing with this midterm exam review. We're ready now for problem 30. You can see here we have a natural exponential function, which we're going to need to differentiate. Let me take just a quick brief minute, just to remind you of something important as we start looking at exponential functions and also log functions. Because when you take derivatives, you have to really keep things straight. We have what I'll call exponential functions and then natural exponential functions. Exponential function is when the exponent is basically any number. Natural exponential function is when, I mean the base, the base is any number. The natural exponential is when the base has to be this special number or constant e. So I could have 10 x squared plus four. That's an exponential function. E x squared plus x is a natural exponential function. The reason why this is important is because if we want to take the derivative of these functions, it's different, right? So if I say y equals four x, and I wanna take the derivative of this, remember you copy the whole derivative function, and then you multiply by the derivative of the exponent, which in this case is one. And then here's the unique part to the exponential function. Then you also have to multiply by the natural log of your base. This is the unique part for exponential functions. For natural exponential functions, let's just do this one. If I'm going to take the derivative of this, first two steps are the same. You just rewrite the whole exponential function, and then you multiply by the derivative of the exponent, which in this case is 2x plus 1, and then you're done. Right? So this is the extra part for exponential functions. All right, so this should be review. Now, the same thing happens when we start doing logs. Let's just do a quick example about y equals log base 5 of 4x. And then over here, we can have y equals the natural log of x squared. Now this is it, we'll just say same thing, natural log of four x. So if I take the derivative of this, so you put one over, whatever is inside the log, you multiply it by the derivative of what's inside the log. And then you multiply by one over the natural log of your base. 
Now for natural log, if we're gonna take the derivative, first two steps are the same, one over whatever's inside the natural log times the derivative of what's inside the natural log, but then you're done. Of course, this would simplify to one over X. This would simplify to one over X times natural log of five. All right, so you got to keep these straight. Now we're going to start doing some problems. We're going to be taking derivatives of log functions and derivatives of exponential functions. All right, so with that quick review, let's start looking at some of these. So here, the function is e to the 19x. So it's a natural exponential function. Steps are pretty straightforward, two-step process. You simply copy or rewrite the exponential function. And then we're gonna multiply by the derivative of the exponent. Derivative 19 x is 19. I'll just stick the 19 out front. And there's your answer. All right. Let's see what's next. So here, function is x to the eighth times e to the seven x. Now, sometimes you gotta, you gotta think through these things. When you first look at this, you think, oh, this is a exponential function. Well, no, it's not an exponential function. Exponential function is when you have a variable as part of your exponent. The exponent here is just eight. So this function is just a normal, when I eventually take the derivative of this, I have to keep in mind the normal power rule where you bring the eight down front. So don't get confused. But what we do have, we'd have like sort of like two separate functions are multiplied together. So to take this derivative, I have to use the product rule. So these are my, are my two functions. So if I apply the product rule, I always write down the first, copy the first, times the derivative of the second function. So the second function is a natural exponential function. So the rule is you copy or rewrite the whole function and you multiply by the derivative of the exponent. In this case, it's gonna be seven. So this is the first half of the product rule. Now I'm gonna copy or rewrite the second function, multiplied by the derivative of x to the eighth. Well, derivative of x to the eighth is just eight x to the seventh, right? It's the power rule. Now it looks like, when I look at my answers, they did some factoring here. So let me try and factor also. Looks like they factored out, I can factor out an X to the seventh and an E to the seven X. And when I do that, this first term, I have seven X and this one, I believe it's just eight. So there you go. All right, another natural exponential function. This one looks pretty straightforward, right? You rewrite or copy the whole exponential function and then you multiply the derivative of the exponent. 3x squared plus 7. Thirty-three. I'm not sure we've done one of these kind yet in terms of 
like a fraction of two functions, we're eventually gonna to have to use the quotient rule. So it's good that we have one of these so we can practice the quotient rule. So what have I got? I've got a natural log function and then x to the seventh, which is typical power log, power function. So if you recall the quotient rule, the little saying I use is like log d high minus high d low over the low squared, right? Where the d high means the derivative of what's in the top. d low is the derivative of what's in the bottom. So the low means you just copy down what's in the bottom. Low d high, the derivative of what's in the top. Derivative, natural log of x, is just one over x times the derivative of what's inside the natural log, which is just one. Minus high d low, derivative of x to the seventh is just seven x to the sixth. And all of that is over the low squared. Let's sort of simplify and see if we can claim this up at all. X to the seventh times one over X, where you have an X that cancels, so I think X to the sixth minus, that's right, seven X to the sixth out front times natural log of X. X to the seventh squared is actually X to the 14th. Now I do have two terms in the top and they both have an X to the sixth and I got an X to 14th in the bottom. So I can cancel out x to the sixth out of all three of these. One minus seven natural log of x over x to the eighth. So, so far, all the problems I've done, the last few problems are either natural exponential functions, or in this case, a natural log function. I assume pretty soon I'm gonna do some problems of just regular exponential log functions. Here, another natural log function. So the way we take the derivative of a natural log is you put one over, whatever's inside the natural log function. And then you multiply by the derivative of what's inside the natural log function. And you can't really simplify that, so that would be your answer. If you wrote it, you might put the parentheses top of the fraction, but pretty much all the same thing. Here, let me give you a hint, which I don't know why, you don't I mean, need that hint, but anyways. So g of x is the natural log of x, that whole function raised to seventh power. Extended power rule, normally I just call it the chain rule. A lot of people call it the chain rule. So the idea is we take the derivative. This is like having stuff in parentheses raised to a power. So you bring the seven down front, you simply copy down what's in the parentheses and you subtract one from the exponent. And then you multiply by the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. Well, the derivative of natural log of x is just one over x. So this ends up being seven natural log x to the sixth over x.
All right. So, well, things aren't too bad. All right. Now the fun begins. Now we're going to do a story problem. Probably some kind of story problem with exponential functions. Probably might be what we call either a growth or a decay kind of problem. Let's see what we have. Between 2006 and 2016, the number of applications for patents in grew by about 4.3% per year. So they told you that, then they sort of asked you, they actually give you, once again, I don't have time to teach us, explain it. I've talked about it before. Based upon this information, this is gonna be like a natural exponential kind of equation because the derivative of n is 0 0.043 times n. And the 0 0.043 comes from this 4.3%. So they're basically telling us here, this function is growing as a natural exponential function. Matter of fact, the first thing they ask for is find the function that satisfies this equation. Great two part question. Find the function. It says assume that t equals zero corresponds to 2006 when approximately 452,000 patents were received. So if you recall, what's going to happen is for my natural exponential function, this number here is like my k. So I can say the original function turns out n of t is n naught e to the kt. So that's going to look. I know the k here. This n naught is going to be the initial value of the function. In other words, the value of the function when time is 0. And they, they gave us that. They says when time is 0, there were 452,000 patents. So I can plug both of those in. So 452,000 for n naught times e to the point zero four three t. So that is the answer to part A. Now, Part B, estimate the number of patent applications in 2021. So I'm going to use this equation I just developed because this tells us the number of patents according to what year you plug in. You pick a year, plug it in for T, you do the calculation. They're asking for 2021. Now, this is where you have to be careful because 2006 is when the clock starts. Here they say, assume that T equals zero corresponds to 2006. We're looking at 2021. Well, how many years have passed since 2006? Well, 15 years. So when I use this equation, I'm gonna plug in 15 for T. So basically I plug in, you could think of part B, just to be clear, if I write it out, what I'm really looking at is n of 15. n, the number of patents, when t, the time, is 15 years. So it's 452,000 times e to the 0 0.043 times 15. This is really definitely going to use your calculator. So in a minute, I'm going to use this little, this little yellow part up here on my calculator is e to the x. That's the key I use to calculate natural exponential functions. For this one, I have to hit the, what's called the second, the yellow, yellow button to make this active. So I'm going to put 0 0.043 times 15 equals so 0.645 is actually the exponent. But if I want to now figure out what e to that is, 
on my calculator, I can do this. So 1.905 is my natural exponential function. I'm gonna multiply that by 452,000. I look at the answer round to the nearest whole number. So if I round to the nearest whole number, looks like 861,506. All right, hopefully. You realize that that's not too hard. Now part C. The rate of change. Remember rate of change? What does rate of change mean? Whenever you see the word rate of change, you should be thinking derivative. Rate of change means derivative. The rate of change in the number of patent applications in 2021 is about, so what they're saying is, I'll just write it. 2021, once again, is when T is 15. They're saying, what's the derivative, the rate of change of this patent function for year 15? In other words, part B, we calculated how many actual patents they had during 2021. And this is not asking how many patents you have, it's like during that year, how is it changing? Is it growing? Is it decreasing? You know, what's going on? Are the number of patents, we're making more and more, or we're starting to make less and less. Now, the nice thing is about this problem, I'm gonna go back up here. See this original equation they gave me? The derivative of n is 0 0.043 times the original function. I'm going to use that because what makes it really nice is this N of 15, that's what I just calculated in the previous problem. N of 15 is 861506. So I can plug that number in here. And then it's just a straightforward grabbing my calculator and crunching these numbers. Matter of fact, my calculator still has that number in there. So let's multiply by 0 0.043. And once again, you probably round to the nearest whole number is needed. So it's three, seven, zero, four, five, now the units here are gonna be patents per year, right? Rate of change. How are the number of patents changing per year? Or they call them applications. All right, a story problem, which most of you probably don't like, but hopefully you realize that wasn't too bad. So I can go ahead and do another one. If the amount P naught is invested in Mandelbrot bond fund and interest is compounded continuously at 6.5% per year, the balance P grows at the rate given by dP dt equals 0.056P. So actually for the second problem in a row, they've given you some information but they've once again give you this equation for the derivative equaling this. This is the same as what we had up here. Notation is different. Up here, we, they did the notation with the n prime equals this. Here, they did this other notation, but it's telling us the same thing. So basically what it's telling us is that for our natural exponential equation, they're giving us the k. So the first question is find the function. That's how I said, okay, write it in terms of P naught and 0 
which they almost didn't have to say all that. So instead of writing K, let me just go ahead and put in 0 0.065. So in this case, they want you to leave the initial value as P naught. This problem up here, they gave it to us right away and they wanted us to plug it in right away. But for here, they say, go ahead and leave it, leave the P naught in the 0 0.065. So this is the answer to part A. Uh, they say, suppose $1,000 is invested. What is the balance after one year and after four years? So it's two separate problems. But both of them are going to use this equation. This is an equation that tells us P is the amount of money you have in this fund. So P naught is like how much you initially put it in how much you put into the fund, and T will be the number of years it's in the fund. And this is a calculation to tell you how much your investment is worth after those years. So really, we have two problems. We're looking at um, investing $1,000. So P of one, which is the amount after one year, we put in one for T, 0 0.065 times one. And then we're also gonna look at four, same exact equation, except the time is four. I don't know if I have enough room to squeeze this in. So grab your calculator. Now this exponent is 0 0.065 times 1,000. And it says, I'm looking for rounding. Does it say, I'll assume it's just dollars. Although my assumption's wrong, I look at the answers I have, it actually gives it in cents. So, Like P of one is one zero six seven point one six. So basically, you invested thousand dollars and you made sixty seven dollars sixteen cents after one year. After four years, so I'm gonna do point zero six five times four equals times one thousand. One, two, nine, six point nine three. So after four years, you made almost three hundred dollars. So that's the answers for part B. Part C, the rate of change of the balance after one year is, so I think they want you to give a number and the units. So now we do the, this is really the identical problem we just did a minute ago, where now we want to find the rate of change after one year, which I can use this equation here. 0 0.065 P of one year and the rate of change after four years, 0 0.065 P of four. Let's, let's do the P of four first because I've still got that number in here. So this times 0 0.065 84.30, so I would say, it's gonna be dollars per year, dollars per year. And then the derivative for year one, 
P of one is one zero. Six seven point one six times point zero six five sixty nine point three seven. And it's in dollars per year. All right, so these two problems are actually pretty much identical. All right, I'll try and finish these out. So maybe we have left. Another story problem. It's like another money kind of story problem. 2004, an art collector paid, wow, look at this. $97,363,000 for a particular painting. That's crazy. And the same painting sold for $28,000 in 1950. And now they say, okay, answer these questions. Find the exponential growth rate to three decimal places and determine the exponential growth function for which V of T is the painting's value in two years since 1950. So they're saying, 1950 is like when the clock starts. So that's t equals zero. They tell us ex exponential growth function, which means we know the equation is gonna look like this. Now they tell us in 1950, year zero, the painting was worth $28,000. That means that is actually our initial value, P naught. So if I write that in here, now I don't know what K is. In the previous problems, they've given us the K. As a matter of fact, part A, first thing they do is they tell you to go figure out what k is so they said figure out what k is and then write the growth function so here's the growth function i just need to figure out a number for k and then i finish part a so how to figure out what k is well in this case the way i'm going to figure out what k is is i'm going to look and they told me in 2004 the painting was worth this much. I can take that information and I can actually plug it into this equation and it will allow me to calculate K. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, in 2004, if 1950 is year zero, what would T be for 2004? Well, 54 years have passed since 1950. So T is 54, and then this is the value of the painting during that 54th year. So what I can do is I could take this equation and set my T equal to 54, and V of 54 is this number. I can plug in 54 and for T up here, and when I do all that, the only variable left, the only thing undefined that equation is K and I can solve for K. So let me do it down here because this is uh, gonna involve a little bit of math. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, just to make it very clear, I'm gonna choose year, the 54th year for the painting. e to the k times 54. I know v of 54, this number right here. So if I plug that number in, 97, 3630000 equals 28,000, 000, e to the, I'll just write it 54k. 
All right, I need to somehow solve for this K. The goal is, what is K equal? The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to first get this exponential function by itself. So I'll divide both sides by 28,000. So I got to take this super big number, 97363000, divided by 28,000. And it's this number right here. Three, four, seven, seven point two five equals e to the 54k. Now, tricky thing about trying to solve for this k is it's stuck up here in the exponent. But hopefully you remember now how to solve equations like this. Now, since my base here is E, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides of this equation. And the important thing is when you take the natural log of the E to the 54K, this whole thing simplifies down to whatever the exponent is. And this is just going to be a number. Matter of fact, I've still got this here. If I hit my natural log key, it's 8.1540. Now, if, if I divide both sides by 54, then I'll have my value of K. And they said to three decimal places. 0 0.151. So this is my K, so now I can plug that in here. Or actually, I should say plug it in here. No, let me look up here. Plug it in here for K. So then my equation for the value of the painting is 28,000 e to the 0.151 t. So you just plug in how many years have passed since 1950, and you can calculate the value of the painting. So once again, I had to first calculate the k in order to then write the function. So part B, predict the value of the painting in 2023, all right? So how many years have passed between 1950 and 2023? 73 years, right? So basically you go and you plug in 73 for T and you do the calculation. Oops, if you want to see me. So I took, this is the exponent. Now I'm going to convert to this exponential function. So there's the exponential function then times 28. This is probably going to be a big number. Oh, but they said round to the nearest million is needed. So you write this number down. If I think about it, the million, the moon's place is that five. So it's gonna be, it'll be one, seven, one, five. That's crazy. If this is real, then that meaning is this painting, is almost worth $2 billion. Crazy. And anyways, of course the units are dollars. Here's an interesting question. How long, D, how long after 1950 will the value of the painting be 6 billion? So now they're saying, so if you look about, if you look at this, just take a quick look, understand it. 
we first are looking at this painting, 1950, it's worth $28,000. Then I told us 54 years later, and it increased to 97 million. But then we just calculated that looking in 2023, 73 years later, now it's worth 1.7 billion. Now they're saying, okay, obviously the value of the painting keeps going up. How long will it take until the painting is worth 6 billion? So what are we doing there? And since we're taking our equation, which is really right here, and I'm gonna put V of T equal to 6 billion and then calculate the time. So that's what I wanna know. So 6 billion equals 28,000 e to the point one five one t. Now I'm solving for t. This is similar to how I solved this equation. This equation right here. First thing is to divide both sides by twenty eight thousand. Hopefully, my calculator can put all these numbers in there: six and then nine zeros. I could just fit in divided by twenty-eight thousand. So now I've got two one four two eight five point seven is equal to e to the point one five one t. Now my goal here is figure out what t equals, solve for t. So what do I do since my t is stuck up here in the exponent? Take the natural log of both sides. So this is gonna be a number. I'll just hit the natural log key here. 12.275 equals 0.151t. So if I divide both sides by 0.151, 81.3 years. So you keep the painting for over 81 years, then it'll be worth $6 billion, which is sort of crazy. All right, so that was a story problem where we're doing some different things here now. Okay, let's keep going now. We finally do have, notice this, y equals seven, x to the fifth plus seven. This is not a natural exponential function. This is just called an exponential function. And they want to find the derivative, so the rules change, right? You've got that extra step we talked about. So the first two steps are the same. Copy down, rewrite the exponential function, then multiply it by the derivative of the exponent, in this case, 5x to the fourth. But then you have to add this where you multiply by the natural log of the base. So that should be your answer. Number 40, now they have us do a log base five function. So this is different than when we were doing natural log functions, taking derivatives. So what do you do? You take one over whatever's inside the log then you multiply by the derivative of what's inside the log. In this case, it's going to be 8x to the 7 plus 1. But then you tack on 1 over 
the natural log of your base. Looks pretty messy, but that is actually the answer. It's like maybe one more and some story problems. Y equals 12 to the X times log base seven of X. So this is an actual exponential function. This is a log function, they're multiplied. So we're gonna have to use the product rule. to find the derivative. Product rule, write down the first times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of log seven of X. So you put one over what's inside the log times the derivative of what's inside the log times one over the natural log of the base. That is the first half of the product rule. Second half now, just copy down log base seven X times the derivative of 12 to the X. So remember the derivative of a exponential function is you wrap, rewrite the exponential function, multiply by the derivative of the exponent, and then also you have to multiply the natural log of the base. So, I'm just checking my answer to make sure. I mean, you would clean this up a little bit, but you can't write simplify. So you have 12 X over X times natural log seven plus, you know, all this stuff. And that's basically the answer. All right, a few more problems left. Looks like some story problems to finish out with. So 42, chemical substance has a decay rate of 8.8% .8 per day. The rate of change of amount of the chemical after one day is given. So they give us this equation involving the derivative of the function. Looks a lot like the problems you just did, except I think the difference here, this is a decay function. This just means this is my K here. This means my K is negative. But other than that, you could do the same thing. So my function, here's the basic exponential, natural exponential function. So they say let N not represent the amount of the substance at T0, find the exponential functions. They want this function. They're saying just leave the n naught here, but I know this is my k. So for part a, it's going to be e to the minus point zero eight eight t. So there's part a. Suppose 700 grams of the substance is present at time zero. So what are they doing there? They're basically giving us the N naught, right? So they're telling us N naught is 700. How much more remain after three days? So let's just put the 700 in here for N naught. So now this becomes my function. And now they're saying, how much do you have after three days? This is something where the amount is actually decreasing. So I simply plug in three for T here. 
let's go and do that calculation. So 0 0.088, that's negative, times three equals, so this is not my exponent. Now calculate the exponential function, which is this times 700. Now I need to see if they want me to round it. They don't even say. But when I see the answer, it looks like they rounded it to the whole number. So I'll call it 538. I should have told you. And they don't even give you a unit. So however, however they're measuring it's 538. So it starts out, it started out as 700. Then after three days, we're down to 538. So the amount is dropping. What is the rate of change, the amount of the substance after three days? So once again, the rate of change is another word for derivative. So we're gonna use, once again, I'm gonna write it like this. I'm looking for the rate of change at three days, but the good thing is I just calculated N of three in the previous problem. So I plug in 538 for N of three, multiply it by 0 0.088. Negative, negative 47.3. So this is saying that the rate of change is negative, which means the amount is decreasing. Half of the substance will remain after how many days? Now this is normal, they don't use the word here, but I've talked about it before. When you're doing these decay kinds of problems, half-life is a very common kind of thing to have you calculate. Half-life means how much time has to pass before the amount of your substance or material has dropped in half. So for us, we know that we began with 700. So in a sense, what we could do is just figure out how long it takes for the amount to be 350. So there's really two ways to do a half-life for this problem. If N naught is 700, what I'm gonna call N of half-life, that's equal 350, right? Because the half-life means the amount has dropped in half. So therefore, we can go plug in 350 into our original equation, just to make it clear. So here's our original equation that we come up with. I'm gonna just go and say, how long does it take So I plug in 350 for my amount and I say, how long does it take for the amount to be 350? So if I divide both sides by 700, it's interesting how I have Point 0.5 here. I was gonna show you a second way to sort of calculate this kind of problem, but I'm gonna hold off because it might be more confusing to some of you. 
This is a pretty straightforward problem, so we'll just finish it. If I need to get t, it's up here in the exponent. My base is e, so I'm going to take the natural log. Both sides. This is just going to be a number. Negative point six nine three. Negative zero eight eight t. So if I divide both sides by negative point zero eight eight. End up with 7.88, round to one decimal point. So 7.9 actually, that's my answer. Round to dump some decimal 7.9. All right, kind of problem we've done before. All right, so here we go. Like I said, half-life is a pretty big deal with these decay problems. So here's a half-life problem. The half-life T for a particular radioactive element is 14 minutes. Find the decay rate. So here's the deal. These equations all look the same. This one we're calling, oh, T is the half-life. Let's just call it F. Whatever we're looking at. F not e to the k t. So this is the equation for natural exponential growth. They don't tell us hardly anything. However, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide both sides by F not. And I'll, I think I've probably explained this before in the lecture, but I'll say it again. Now, if we're looking at a half-life problem, this, if not, is the original amount. And the half-life problem will be half the original amount. So if you take half the original amount divided by the original amount, what is this fraction going to be? It's going to be a half. Or I can write as 0.5. So we're talking half-life. And actually, they told me the time of the half-life. They said it's 14 minutes. So really, what I should have written here is 0.5 equals e to the k times 14 power. You know what? For this equation here, I am now able to calculate K, just like we've done. Take the natural log of both sides. So natural log of 0.5 divided by 14 should be K. 0.5 natural log divided by 14. Negative point. I wonder how much they want me to do not round the phalanx or then, then round to the nearest tenth is needed. The nearest tenth? Wow. Um, well, let me jot this down for now. But they want. They want in percent, so tricky. Now this number says a decimal. If I change it to percent, that means I move the decimal point two places. But if they want to round it to one decimal, what's this negative?
or I think they because they call it decay, right? They probably just put in five. So the answer is five, basically. Last two problems. All right. 44. Of an initial amount of 1,000 grams of lead 210, how much will remain in 160 years? Lead 210 decays at a rate of 3.15% per year. So they're basically telling us, we'll just call it F50 again. Initial amount, 1,000 grams. So the initial amount's 1,000 grams. They're saying it decays. 3.15%. I need to convert that to a decimal when I put it in the equation, right? Which means I move the decimal to, to the left, 0 0.0315. E to the negative, since it's decay, 0 0.0315 times T. So based on the information they've given me, I kick up this equation, and now they're saying how much is left after 160 years. So I put in 160 for T. I'll just go ahead and do this calculation just to save time. So 0 0.0315 negative. times T, which is 160. Now, need to turn that into an exponential function times 1,000. They say round to one decimal place is needed. If I didn't mess up, it should be 6.5. And the last problem, it's another decay story problem. The amount of carbon-14 present in animal bones after two years is given by this equation. A bone has lost 38% of its carbon-14. How old is the bone? To the nearest year, what's the age of the bone? So they've given us this equation here. And now they're saying they want to know how long it takes so this bone, the amount of carbon-14 present in the bone is decreasing. Things are decaying. And they're saying, okay, how long does it take until the bone has lost 38% of its carbon-14? So just to make sure we understand what that means, say, for instance, just for fun, say the original amount was 100. If a bone has lost 38% of its carbon-14, that means after that, the amount left, wouldn't it be 62? So if it lost 38%, it hasn't quite lost half. If it lost half, it would be a 50 but it's lost 38%, which I means it's 62 left. I say all that to help you sort of get a feel for this. I'm going to divide both sides by P naught. It's like there's one, two, three, two, zero, nine, seven, T. Once again, this is like the original amount. This is like the current amount. And we're looking at the time. For my little example, I made these numbers up, but I could do that because they gave me the percent. It's almost like 62 over 100. 
which is really 0.62 equals e to the negative 0 0.00012097 t and the way we solve this is to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my calculator. We don't know so much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the natural log of 0 0.62 and then divide it by this thing here, and that should be the time. So I'm skipping some steps because we've done this for so many times and I'm running out of paper. And we're also, it's the last question. So 0 0.62 natural log divided by 0 0.0001207 negative time 395, I don't know what the to round to. The nearest integer, so I think it's this. I guess it must be years, 3952. And that's actually how they, when they start digging up old things, that's how they try and determine how old something is. They look at the amount of carbon-14 left, and they do this kind of calculation to make an estimate of how old say when did the animal originally die or something. All right, that is it. So hopefully, if you get stuck on these problems, you can go back and see how I work them out and that can help you.